Hi, thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about lesson 9-3, integrals of trig functions. So last lesson in 9-2, we covered all of the derivatives of the six basic trig functions. From those derivative rules, you can get all of these integral rules. Now I can't emphasize it enough. If you've been having trouble with integration in this class, most of the integral rules are just the reverse of the derivative rules. That's the whole idea. Integration is the opposite of differentiation, like we talked about way back when in lesson five. So each of these rules comes from the derivative rule corresponding to it. If I take the derivative of sine, for instance, I get cosine. Now, if I take the derivative of cosine, I get negative sine. But that's why we have this negative here to compensate. If we take the derivative of negative cosine, I get negative, negative sine, or just positive sine. So these are actually not that bad to memorize. Again, I'll draw your attention to all of the chain rule versions. Highlighting is probably easier. All of the chain rule versions, all of them, are the only ones you need to know. And that all of these chain rule versions have that u prime hook off factor in them. That u prime hook off in each of these formulations, you need to make sure you have first. Nope, not that's you. Um, you need to make sure you have all these u primes first before you can integrate. That's what we've been doing since lesson five. If you struggle with integration, this is important. This is a basic level of integration compared to what chapter nine will get you to. Chapter nine ends with the most advanced integration techniques. So this is one last time to get on board with pretty simple integration techniques. And by simple, I mean, if you're going to try to pass the AP test, you need to learn these six rules by heart because they're just reverses of a derivative rule. Some students like to use a mnemonic here, a memory device. They think the rule for derivatives is that if it's a co-function, cosine, cosecant, cotangent, we have a negative. And here that's opposite. So, and because integration is opposite. I don't really like that. If you like that, write it down. Again, the integral of cosine is sine. If I see cosine in integral, I'm saying, well, whose derivative is cosine? with sine. Who's missing in this table though? We have most of the major functions represented, but we are missing two big ones. And those functions we're missing are sine, sorry, are tan and cotan. But we can develop the rules for those. We can prove these rules. You don't necessarily have to memorize them, but I would for sine, or for tan and cotan. I know I keep calling this guy sine. So, the trick here, and you can go ahead and pause the video if you want to try this, if you think you see how this will work, pause the video right now, try it out. The trick here is to write tan as sine of x over cosine x. Over cosine x, dx, the dx days. What kind of rule does that look like? Pause it now. Maybe try to think about it. It should kind of be clear. Don't turn it back into tan. Three, two, one. Well, if the bottom is u, we always try to check the derivative of the bottom. If I don't see a group on the bottom, if it's not a root, if it's not a group to a power, I always try to check the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of cosine? Three, two, one. You have to know it's negative sign. You have to. That's the only way forward in this course. So we need this to say negative sign. So we'll make it negative, negative. And now that's u prime. This top is the hook off. Now we get to say this is natural log. A lot of students make the mistake of just doing natural log without checking for hook off. It's the same thing you've been doing all year. So we get nat negative stays, natural log, absolute value, cosine, plus c. Normal s is so small. And that's it. It's a really loud truck. Um, 
cotan is a similar trick. We're going to write this as cosine x over sine x. Can you use that trick yet? Try it out. Pause the video. Three, two, one. So here, if we're trying to say that guy's u, what's the derivative of sine? It's cosine. So that's on top. U and U prime. We don't have any hook off. Cotan is just natural log absolute value sine. For both of these functions, it's imperative you remember the absolute value. Absolutely essential. And those are our two key functions. Or our two last derivative rules. Sometimes you'll see this one. I'm going to make a note. Because we can bring the negative inside, we can make this as cosine x. This is not a uh, inverse function. This is not the inverse function. This is using a log rule. Give it away there. So sometimes you'll see this natural log secret. Just to be clear, these are both okay. You can use either one. The rules we're going to state in our book is negative natural log cosine and natural log sine. That's it. Going with the rule again, now the co functions, they integrate to all a negative one. Sorry, the co functions integrate to a positive function. Non co function negative. Some people like that rule, other people don't. You have to memorize all of these formulas. Yes, you do. Start making flashcards. Hopefully, you'll get practice in. We have a few more months. Here we go. The rest of this lesson is all just examples. I highly recommend you pause, try as many as you feel like. If you feel hesitant, watch the watch the bit, but keep working on them. I don't know if I'm going to do the pause three, two, one thing the whole time, but we'll see. It's just a rhythm. All right, so this guy, what do I notice? I notice I have sine x dx, and I have this constant. Now, a rule many people don't get used to is that we can factor out the constant from the integral. Did you pause it? Did you try it? Now you really should. It should be really easy from here. So then we get negative three and the antiderivative of sine or the integral of sine is negative cosine plus C. So we could also simplify this to three cosine X plus C. Done. Try this one out. No, really do, do it. Pause it now, pause it now, three, two, one, did you try it? Did you notice that now cosine has an inside? So we want this to be like cosine of u. So we need to check the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside in this case is pi. So we want to hook on or hook off in this case pi. And to pay for that pi, we're going to use a 1 over pi. Just like that. It works like any other number. Pi is just a number. So this guy hooks off. We keep the 1 over pi. And now that we have the hook off, we have the u prime. That's the u. Now that we have the hook off, we just do sine of the original inside. Easy peasy. This should feel basically familiar. It's just one new function being added to your already existing derivative tool set. So, uh, next. If those last two were easy, keep going. If they were hard, maybe pause the video, try these two out. Keep working on it. It's important to try some stuff independently. You should have the hang of this. If you have the rules in front of you, you should have the hang of it. These are just the same things we've been working on all year. So this guy looks more complicated. He looks more dangerous. 
Here's your last chance to try it. Three, two, one. What jumps out at me as the most complicated guy is secant. A lot of medium strength students say, oh, and then it's secant squared. So we probably want to write this as secant y cubed squared and use a power rule. That's very bad. It's a very bad path. You should recognize secant squared as the derivative of a function. Do you? It's really essential that you memorize those trig derivative rules. Please work hard on that. So secant squared is the derivative of tan. So this is actually my number one function. And so the inside of secant squared is u. And we want to find u prime. What's the derivative of y cubed? The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared. Hey, look, we have that y squared just sitting there waiting to be used, waiting to sacrifice itself for the cause. So again, this 3y squared is the derivative of y cubed. It's the hookoff we wanted. To get that 3, though, we had to pay with a 1 third. We keep the 1 third. What is the antiderivative of secant squared? So this part's changing. The inside stays the same. The antiderivative of secant squared is tan. And the inside stays the same. 1 third tan y cubed plus c. Done. Okay, again, this one's the most ugly one, but why don't you go ahead and try it? So what do you notice about this? Three, two, one. What I notice is the derivative of one of the basic functions I need to memorize, namely secant tangent. Secant tangent is the derivative of secant. So now we just need to figure out who u is. So that's repeated. Again, it's very confusing to people. We don't just look at this guy. We don't look at this guy. You shouldn't be rewriting them as sine and cosine. That's a really bad idea. So we have secant. We have tangent. The u is 2x plus 1. So what would u prime be? u prime would be just 2. Again, don't do 2 squared. Don't do anything weird. Just be calm and do what I'm telling you to do. So we have 2 times secant 2x plus 1, tan 2x plus 1, and to pay for that 2, we're going to have a 1 half. That 2 is going to hook off. It's the u prime. And then again, the key idea here is secant tan is the derivative of one of the basic functions, secant. And the inside should say the same, plus c. Don't forget your plus c's. Okay? Check it. If the You could do the derivative. Every single one of these today, you could do the derivative and see that you would work yourself back here. We'd have the one there. We take the derivative of a tan, outside, secant squared, keep the package the same, hook on 3y squared. Here, we keep the 1 half. Derivative of a secant is secant tan, times the derivative of the inside, 2. It's that easy. That's where everything's coming from. Two more. Try it out. This first one's not that fun. <laughs> um... This first one is interesting. Three, two, one. How would I do the first one? I would usually do the first one like this. I would rewrite this as cosine 5x times sine 5x 
squared. Oh, negative 2. Why is it negative? Because it was in the bottom. Sine squared is sine of 5x quantity squared. Hopefully this step's clear. Now, why did I know to do this? It's because sine squared is not one of my basic functions. It's not a derivative of one of my basic functions. I'm sorry. It's not a derivative of anybody. But I do know the relationship between sine and cosine is that cosine is the derivative of sine. I'm also thinking the bottom. So again, in case you missed the intermediate step, I will write it down. Just so we can all be on the same page. Can't discount that. And the bottom is a group to a power. The bottom is a group to a power. So maybe, just maybe, it's the reverse power rule. So when you see this, now you're thinking, oh, maybe it is the reverse power rule. So this is the most important function, the power. And now we're thinking about u is the inside here. So u is sine of 5x. What's the derivative of sine of 5x? Quick. It should be 5 cosine 5x. But we don't have that, but that's okay. We can force that to happen. We can get a 5 on the inside by multiplying by 5 over 5 and bringing the 5 inside. That's what we've been doing. We have 1 fifth on the outside to pay for the 5 on the inside. That's going to be the hook off, which will allow us to accomplish our power rule that we want to do so much. Now, a lot of people have been messing this up. Try your best to do the power rule here. Three, I'll wait. Three, two, one. Did you pause the video? All I've written so far is one-fifth. You have the chance. You really do. Um, now we're going to do sine. Add one to the power. Divide by the new power. Plus C. You should try to simplify this. If you haven't already, go ahead and simplify it now. Three, two, one. You should have paused the video to simplify it, just so you know. Three, um, this is not, okay, it's not, don't write this down if you're just listening to me, tuning me out kind of, it's not this. How dare you? How dare you even think about writing that on my paper? Bad. One over sine 5x. And that's the same as negative one-fifth cosecant. 5x. So if you did this problem a different way, you could have gotten to that answer a different way, a slightly different way. I don't know why I'm on a slant. I was pretty tilted all day. Um, all right. Let's write it nicely. Another method to do this problem would be to break this into sine and cosine. I don't want you getting into that habit. If you did that and got to this answer, good. That will work sometimes. Oftentimes it will not work. Oftentimes it will be a very bad idea. Please be careful. So I'm just going to do it that way. This is the preferred method. You should be working on this method. You should have this method on your paper. This is the method I'm looking for. So here we go. One more. Again, please pause the video and try it. Three, two, one. Tan and secant squared are related with differentiation. That is what should have jumped out at you, not changing this to sine and cosine, not changing this to cosines and sines. That's kind of silly. That will slow you down. If I make the bottom, this is what I've been saying ever since chapter seven. From here on out, you need to check, is the derivative of the bottom on the top? Derivative of tan is secant squared. 
It's already in U prime over U form. This should have been the easiest one on here, or at least one of the easiest ones. So if you had trouble with this, that's a bad sign for either your trig, your trig derivative knowledge, or your natural log integration knowledge. Here we go. Slightly more complicated example. Integrate tan squared x. So as the hint says, if you don't want me to read this, you can pause it, fast forward, whatever. Try it out though, try out the problem. The problem is quite simple to integrate correctly. It does require to know trig. From the basic Pythagorean identity, you can divide all the terms by cosine squared. I did this in either 9-1 or 9-2, 9-1 I think. I did this already. We can divide all the terms by cosine squared, sine squared over cosine squared, tan squared, cosine squared over cosine squared, one, 1 over cosine squared, secant squared. You could also do this, hint, hint. So, what substitution could you make to integrate tan squared? Really think about it. You have to rearrange one of these as a hint. Pause it right now. Try the video. Try the video. Try the problem. Sadness. Um... All right, here's the hint. We have tan squared, so we want to solve for tan squared. So if you do solving for tan squared, you would notice that solving for tan squared, we would get wow, such underlying. We would get tan squared equals secant squared minus 1. So that integral is the integral of secant squared x minus 1. Now again, the reason we memorize our trig integrals and our trig derivatives is to recognize, oh, I know how to integrate secant squared. The integral of secant squared is easy because it's the derivative of one of the functions I memorized. Secant squared is the derivative of 3, 2, one tangent. Negative one is the derivative of negative x plus c. That's it. This comes up so often on the test, it's stupid. Please memorize one of these trig identities. Memorize how to get the trig identity. Memorize this problem for crying out loud. You will see something like this on the test. It's more important to memorize how to do it or also known as learn how to do it, rather than just memorize, oh, tan squared is tan x minus x. Nobody memorizes that. They memorize that you use a trig identity to get to it, because a trig identity makes it easy. And the only identity you have to know is the basic Pythagorean one. Yes, you have to know it. Yes, you have to know it. Last one. And this feels like a very short video. I hope it really is, and I'm just not going crazy. Find the area bounded by y equals 2 cosine x and y equals 1 half tan x and x equals 0. Set up an integral, use a calculator integrate. Now, you should be able to do the graph by hand. I'm sorry if you already went ahead and did all this by, with a calculator. If you can't graph these guys by hand, you're doing something wrong with your whole life. y equals 2 cosine x. y equals 2 cosine x. Just plug in the easy values. Look, they give you a little window here. Uh, cosine of 0 is what? 1. So 2 cosine of 0 will be 2. Pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 is 0. So my cosine graph will look like this. A little better. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 1 half tan. Same thing. What's tan of 0? It's zero. What's tan of pi over two? Undefined. Ooh, did you say it was one? That's no bueno. It's totally undefined. Bad children, bad. Something like that.
That's what tan will look like in that window. X equals zero is just lounging about. Hey, he's a special line. Which line is it? Did you say the x-axis? That's bad. Just because it has x doesn't make it the x-axis. X equals zero is a vertical line. Now, I noticed a lot of people still have trouble shading, still have trouble picking out which area to shade. There's only one area of your many choices that's actually touching all sides. So for instance, a lot of people want to shade this one because it's easier. That's absolutely wrong. Is that really going to touch the side? Maybe a bit at the corner, but this won't be a side of the region. This won't be one of the region's boundaries. So that's not right. It's this one. This is the region you should have shaded if you did try the problem on your own. Whatever. I don't know why I got darker. So we should be able to set up this integral by hand. No one's going to set up the integral for you. You have to be able to set it up by hand. Um, we want an integral. These are both functions of x. So we can do a typical vertical slice. A vertical line like this is what? Top minus bottom. The top curve is 2 cosine x. Yes, you have to know that was the top curve by hand. The bottom curve is 1 half x, tan x, whatever. And we are missing our bounds. How do you hit the bounds? You should be able to do this all on your own. You should show good work. You should say things like bounds. And how do we get them? We set 2 cosine x equal to 1 half tan x. Now, I don't think this is actually that hard to get. No, it is. So we're going to use a calculator to solve this. It's okay to use a calculator sometimes. Everything I've done so far, though, should be able to be done without a calculator by you, not just should be able to be done by a general person. So we're going to go over to our calculator. How are we going to solve an equation using a TI-84? You should know that answer. The answer is to graph it and find the intersections. Are you saying it with me? It's so much more powerful if you do. 2 cosine x, are you in radian mode? I'm always in radian mode. I don't even have to check. You can type 1 half as 0.5. I expect you to know that. Surprise. Zoom. We like zoom trig for this. Wow. My calculator got overexcited. You know, I don't actually like zoom trig. I'd rather do um, the window we have. So why don't we punch in that as the window? From 0 to pi over 2. Oh. That stretched out. Why? Oh, well. Um, we need to find this intersection right where they cross over. Second calc, 5. If you did everything right, you should be so close to the intersection, you don't have to move. You should move it, though. For trig, there's a lot of intersections. Why is it moving so slowly? Whatever. Close enough. Enter, enter, enter. Which value is important? Hopefully, you said the x value. That's what we care about. So they intersect when x equals... I already forgot. I didn't even look at the number. 1.081 or 1.082. Probably should be using 1.082. Either way, we should be actually not rounding. You should store it into A. All right. But for our purposes, we're going to go from where do we want the purple line to start? We want the purple line to start at the left endpoint. The left boundary of the region is x equals 0. And we can write, it's okay to write the 1.082 here, as long as we don't actually use it in our calculator. And now, to calculate this, we don't want to do it on this menu. We don't actually want to do it on this menu. It's inaccurate. We're going to go to the home screen. We're going to store that into A, because I said I was. 
should have just done. Okay. We'll do second answer. Make sure that's right. Okay, good. Store X. No, no, I'm sorry. Store A. It really bothered me. I'm sorry. I got confused. You need to start as A, not X. I'll say I did this intentionally. Haha. -ha. You want to start into A. X is not a safe place to store variables. The calculator has control over that place. All right. So now we're going to do our integral. Math 9, 0 to alpha A. What's the smooth way to do the inside? What's the smooth way to do the integrand? Alpha trace. Did you do it this way? You should feel a little bad if you didn't. One little typo will cost you. Enter. That's the right answer. That's the most accurate answer. I don't know if rounding would have help, ha, uh, affected you. 1.378. That wasn't right. <laughs> what am I talking about? 1.3878. And it's always okay to write that out. 1.3738. Which is again. Which you could round to 1.388 or truncate to 1.387. That's fine, though. You should know that's fine. If you write the fourth decimal place accuracy, you're always fine. That's it. Try out the homework. This was a short video, I hope. Um, try the homework. Have fun with it. This is not hard. This is review. This is review with some new stuff. So please ask me if you're having trouble. It's go time for the AP test. You guys have a great night. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.